I'm here with Brian McAuliffe at the National Research Council's 2 meter by 3 meter wind tunnel. It's one of seven wind tunnels out on the Montreal Road campus and out at the airport, and they do all kinds of aerodynamic testing. He's going to take us and show us through right now. Um, yeah, we have a small model here of the wind tunnel we're actually going to be standing in. Um, this building was uh, originally built in 1940, so it's a fairly old wind tunnel, but it's had many upgrades over the years. And we do some pretty fun stuff here. So we'll take you up to the wind tunnel and show you around. Let's go. Okay, so Brian, one question that strikes me is, we've got seven wind tunnels here. Humans have been living with air for a long time. Don't we know it all already? You might think that, but uh, air flows are actually extremely complex, and we're realizing more and more every day that uh, we need to understand these winds uh, and, and all the air flows that we experience every day uh, better so that we can, we can design our systems, whether it be vehicles or aircraft or even heating and ventilation systems. Uh, uh, to a better performance and save energy and, uh, and reduce sort of our greenhouse gas emissions and carbon footprint. Okay. Now airplanes I got obviously, sailboats, things like that are pretty obvious. Why cars and trucks? Um, well, a big part of the, uh, the fuel you use when you're driving down the road is just to overcome the aerodynamic drag, sort of that resistance to motion just by driving through the air. Uh, and we're finding that more and more uh, there's various different aspects of driving environments that affect that aerodynamic drag. And so what we're investigating now is actually the influence of other surrounding traffic. We're starting to realize that other traffic in, uh, that you're driving around um, will have an impact. Their airwakes, their turbulent airwakes, actually impact your fuel economy. And so we're trying to quantify that through a large project to, uh, to assess whether it has a, a long-term impact and whether or not we can design vehicles better. So sometimes you see a picture of a car or a truck getting tested in a wind tunnel and there's just one vehicle sitting there and wind blowing past it. What's wrong with that picture? Well, basically, it's not a natural environment for a vehicle. Most of the time, you're driving with other traffic or you're driving in scenarios where you have roadside obstacles, trees, street signs, and they generate uh, wind gusts um, in the natural wind environment. And so you're not necessarily replicating all of those ambient conditions when you have an isolated vehicle. You're going to use the wind tunnel to both blow wind but also stir it around with other vehicles? Exactly. Kind of mess it up? Yeah, exactly. We're trying to, to mess up the winds. Typically, wind tunnels have what we call aeronautical quality winds, so very, very smooth, representative of high altitude flight. But near the ground, you never get that. Um, even without other vehicles, it's always messy, and when you're outside, there's wind gusts. And so we try to replicate that, and now we're adding the, the additional component of other vehicles and the wakes that they generate. Okay, well, you're all set up there. Uh, why don't we go and mess up some wind? Sounds good. When you were a kid, did you ever stick your hand out the window? Oh, all the time, yes. <laughs> Is that why you're here today? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, actually, I, I started uh, my aerodynamics career looking at uh, the winds through gas turbine engines, so jet engines, um, and through various uh, different uh, types of testing that I've done, it brought me to this ground vehicle work. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we're inside the wind tunnel right now. Um, so this is our two meter by three meter wind tunnel, so it's roughly three meters wide. Um, so here we have uh, a bunch of one fifteenth scale vehicle models. Well, we got them beside um, each other and in front and behind each other in different distances, so all kinds of yeah, exactly. like you have on a highway. Yeah, and we've actually picked some of these scenarios from looking at traffic camera data. So just to, to find things that are actually realistic. And surprisingly, you do see vehicles following uh, this closely to one another on the road. Um, and so what we, uh, we do in our testing uh, for this, this project is we have a series of instruments all the way at the back of the wind tunnel there, um, and they measure the winds that all of these vehicles are generating downstream. And so we, we do a bunch of different traffic scenarios um, and measure those winds and look at how different they are. And the whole goal of this is to find a way to replicate those winds in a systematic manner so we can then do additional testing of individual vehicles Okay. With, the, with the presence of other vehicles upstream, okay. but without necessarily having tons of cars in the tunnel. How windy does it get? If I just sit here, how much wind is going to blow at me? Um, it depends on what speed we want to run at. This, this wind tunnel can go up to uh, 120 meters per second, so I believe that's 400 kilometers per hour, so it's fairly fast. We don't test at those speeds for this type of work. Um, I think we test at about 200 kilometers per hour. 
which surprisingly is, is low speed for wind tunnel testing. We can actually visualize what's happening. Typically when we're doing wind tunnel testing, um, wind is invisible, so you don't actually see anything. So it looks boring, you, you don't really see much. So we've, we've taped little tufts to the back of the various vehicles so that we'll be able to visualize what's happening in the wakes. So as Brian said, we have a long-term plan for this test and we're not always testing with 1 to 15 scale models. We, we test larger scales, so for instance 30% scale. And you can imagine in that scenario when we're testing a model of that size, we don't have the length in a wind tunnel to have a group of vehicles upstream of another vehicle and measure the drag on it to get that real world effect on it. And so what we're doing is uh, we're taking uh, this test that we're doing now and taking it into um, a simulation situation where we're going to try to replicate that messed up flow downstream of the vehicle and uh, that downstream um, plane that we're going to replicate um, is going to be done by using grids and this is an example of a grid that we're going to test and we're hoping that that is going to give us a change in the flow, as in the reduction of the wind speed and the, also the other characteristics like the way the wind moves within the wake of the vehicle. And uh, we don't know what's going to happen, so we are going to test many designs like this. They won't all be honeycomb and they won't always be that shape. And we're going to learn about how we can manipulate the flow to replicate a wake of a vehicle. So is this going to give you the effect of a longer wind tunnel without having to build a longer wind tunnel? Exactly, yes, that's what we're headed towards. Hallie and Brian, thanks very much for the tour. It's been great.